All right, it's been about two weeks since I got that filter. When I say about two weeks, it's a day or two away from two weeks. And the angel fish has been moved and all that. Plus the replanting of the uh, 65 count. And yeah. So I decided I'm going to do a little like tour video. Now I don't have whole schwack of tanks, but I do still have four, uh, including the quarantine. And I figure I could show off all like the, the changes to the tanks because I've done some changes in both tanks. That's so, like the decor. You know. And the plants and all that. All the fish that live in them. So yeah. I'm gonna start off this video with that. So first here we have our quarantine. There's guppies in the quarantine. As well as that cory. I took the uh, glass catfish out and put him back in because why not? It's cataracts, we're doing much better. Still got slight fin damage. I give him another, another half a week and then I'll be completely healed. And then I'll move them back. So, quarantine. We have a mix of floaters, which have grown back at an exponential rate. Uh, it's basically just salvinia and duckweed. Or, bugbit. Salvinia and bugbit. Salvinia hasn't been growing too much. It's grown a little bit. But the frog bit tape, like, took off. I'm gonna have to, uh, it's, it's all covered in algae, because this is the quarantine. I don't clean algae of the quarantine unless I need to see something. But I'm gonna have to take that out. Okay. Just uh, clean it to get the filter running. I'll do that in a bit here. All right, so we have our 65. Loaders, of course. Again, duckweed. There's a piece of sylvania over there, but mostly just duckweed. Sylvania ain't really worth mentioning. We got our long, flowy plants, which are good. I have to dose this tank with you. fertilizer and whatnot still. So, these guys have had like a little color change, and it's not because they're sick or anything, it's because I've been feeding them nothing but brine shrimp. And those of you that don't know, brine shrimp basically enhances color in fish. For example, this one's turned more pale. It's not because he's sick, it's because he's been eating nothing but color changing food. There's some cataracts. It's doing pretty well. Alright, so all in all, I got those all anchored in there. This tank's been built good for a while. Our broke fish is back there hiding. <coughs> and the blind Cory is way back there with the other one. And it's been doing perfectly fine. No damage to its fins. It's been getting food easily enough because it can just smell it. So yeah, let's go on. On to the next thing. That light is a little bright, but this is the 5.5. Uh, so in there, 
it's hard to see. In fact, you can't really see it because it's so dark. But there's an anchor catfish in there. I'm not going to point the light directly at it because it's nocturnal. Yeah, basically right there, there's an anchor catfish. Planted some of that uh, really fast growing plant. I forget what it's called, but it's, it's basically just like the easy beginner plant. Everybody gets, plant does love to chew on it. So I planted some of that in here. I uh, figured it would be a nice little addition can't just have one plant in here plus a little bit of duckweed up top I have this uh, this in place to keep the duckweed from flying around in the tank and covering the filter like that I actually just gotta brush that off the filter but this way not everything gets shot everywhere I could probably use a little adjusting the water levels dropped a little bit. Oh, uh, as for the filter in this one, it's just an old filter. It's super old. That's all beneficial bacteria. It's been in there for a good year or so. I haven't cleaned it once. Don't need to. I do water change on this tank every week. It's in there for beneficial bacteria and nothing more. Alright, on to the big boy. It's a little cloudy. Say it again. A little cloudy because uh, I was just messing with the filter. I had to snap a piece in there so press it down snap it in place because I guess I forgot to do that while I was setting it up kind of reduce the upward flow so for I was running out half flow for about a week but in this filter we have biomedia so we got our sponge, we got our uh, activated carbon, we don't have to have it, but I like it because it keeps the tank pretty clear and uh, filters out medicine real well because I do dose medicine in these tanks often. Not just for sake, just a it's it's a predatory tank, there is some aggression. I usually just use salt for that. Oh okay. Alright, so above the activated carbon we have a another type of biomedia basically. And it's like an ammonia removing thing. There's some sort of ammonia issues, just just extra and I find it a cool a lot of stuff like a lot of stuff being better. This is the biomedia that came with it. I found this was lacking and I like these better because they do a better job. Yeah. It's just bonus. Of course we have our lucky bamboo. Just sticking up on the filter like that. It's got its own light. Alright, now on to the actual tank itself. A little cloudy, like I said, it'll be much clearer tonight. Since I literally just messed with that filter like 30 minutes to an hour ago. First, we have our like the, the decoration there's fake, like the back part is fake, the front part where the dark spots are that's real. 
It's just like the best thing I could find because Oko stone this size is impossible to find in this city. So I kind of got like a fake Oko stone, uh, no shelter, built some rocks up out front of it so the Pleiko can't get in there and get at the Senapoma because I guess it has some issue with the Senapoma. Also, it's a nice little dark spot for the uh, Senapoma and the Raphael catfish to hide. Uh, I did get some new driftwood in. So, all these three, three, four, four pieces. Yeah, four pieces. So, that back there, that there, that there, and this here are all new. Uh, so I set them up so they're like little, little mini shelters, little hides that aren't quite hides. So we got this big one here. I decided to make it like a, a large hide for Pico, because uh, I could build it up that way. Driftwood, you know, never comes the way you need to come. So I set up this huge hide put that there to support it just so it wouldn't collapse or fall because the plate goes messing around and I got this and I set up these three pieces just for another little hide just in case the angelfish wanted to duck something with the plate go uh yo-yo lashes They're there. The ones in there, at least. So, yo yo latches are doing good. There was a scare with one of them because it just kept swimming like up near the top of the filter and up near the top of the heater. Couldn't find out what its fascination was, but uh, I thought it was lacking oxygen because that's usually a behavior. It's pretty fine though. After I got this filter in place, I'd say about four days later, start acting normal again. There's, there's that one back there. I can see its tail. So that's all good, structurally sound. There's one there. Yeah, basically all set up. I put this one plant in here. I didn't mean to put it there. I wanted to put it further up top, but the Pleco pushed that piece of driftwood over, which is something I'm gonna have to fix again. It structurally sounds like it won't fall over too much, but I gotta like move that so this end is in that corner, making it wider. Uh, Angelfish is doing good. I find it actually like likes this spot. Just a cricket swaying in the filter. Yeah, so that's it pretty much. Now, of all these tapes, Easy. As I was saying before, my alarm went off. All these tanks, easy enough to, or, uh, you know, the easiest one to take care of, easily this. This is literally one water change and built barely any uh, vacuuming because it doesn't really need it. All the waste is so small that it gets either taken up by the filter or yeah, reduced to basically nothing. I spend maybe like 30 minutes on a water change on this tank every week and it's just like take it down this much. 
use about this much. Think about down about this much, which is more than I you know, normally recommend, but anchor catfish live in rivers. And if you don't know what that means, or, you know, because that's how they develop their anchor-like body. You know, locking into spots in rivers and so, okay, I live here now, and so a little bit later. So, yeah, uh, flow's not too bad. It's not like a whole hell of a lot of flow. It's a little bit heavy flow here, calmer flow over here. Lots of sheltering and all that to break up the flow. You know, the plant works as a buffer. The driftwood works as a buffer. Everything works as a buffer just to keep that flow from being too strong. And it isn't. It's just like a trickle. Uh, yeah, easy enough to take care of, basically. I never get to see this fish, though. If I want to see this fish, I have to look for it. It's usually under this leaf. I did lock the leaf in place because it was getting too flat. Then I'd have to actually, like, pick the leaf up just to check up on the, uh, anchor catfish, but I fixed it in place. So now I can always just take a peek underneath there and see if it's there and do all right. Ah, oh, so that's the easiest to take care of. Uh, now I like this tank for the fish in it. I find they're like a nice little uh, mixture of active and inactive. For example, Plankos pretty inactive, Raphael catfish is pretty inactive, Cinepoma is mostly inactive, but when there's food in the tank, he's come to the front. Angelfish is decently active, yo-yo louches are insanely active, and they can absorb a uh, little bit of a beating from the other fish if they kick them off. It doesn't actually hurt them because they are mostly fat. It's just, you know, what they're made of, basically, like, blubber. And they're meant to be like that. As for this tank, see, I personally like this tank probably the most just because of how it looks. And you'd probably agree, too. It's, it's not, like, the prettiest tank, honestly. I would like to have you know, these plants be so much longer and sticking up like the uh, other plant I had was so long ago. I'll have to see if I can get more of that. Because all mine's dead. There's no making anymore. I forgot what it's called, but if I see it in the store, I'll know what it is. I'll pick some up. So, yeah, it's just like the, the amount of greenery in this tank is my favorite. The rope fish is my buddy. Uh, you know, pretty, uh, like not super active fish, but you know, still my homeboy. These coolie louches are good little scavengers. They help clean up. And they actually hang out with that rope fish a lot, which is kind of surprising and unsurprising at the same time. I'm pretty sure that they see each other as like the same thing, just based on their body shape. Or that the, you know, rope fish sees them as baby rope fish. So there's not too much hostility there. Usually all pretty good. Glass catfish or good little middling swimming catfish. I personally like them. Uh, the only thing about these cat like these glass catfish is they have a tendency to hide in dark places. And that's okay. It's it's fine. But 
I do wish they would swim like middle tank for the most part. I guess they got scared because uh, like there was that one fish in here. They used to swim in the middle all the time. They'd all swim in like a corner, a bed filter or something. But I put that paradise in fish, you know, that paradise fish in here and it just took over. They started hiding. Looks like I'm coming out and get down. But yeah, I guess they just found out darker spots are nicer for them. Corey is a good little cleanup crew. Got a bunch of shrimp in here. Not a bunch, really, just like enough. So I got some. Got some regular shrimp. Like some uh, cherry shrimp. I have some cherry shrimp in here. And then I got those guys. Those guys are the Amano shrimp. They definitely do a good job of keeping my plants algae free. Well, the cherry shrimp. I spoke too soon. I see black algae popping up on that one. I'll have to remove it, get wiped down with some peroxide. Quarantine tank, it's not my favorite tank, you know. I, it's just a quarantine tank. It's got a little hide, a little spot where I can anchor some plants in or whatever if I get new plants. It's got some uh, ram horn snails in here. And guppies. The guppies are just eternally breeding in here. Uh, not in ridiculous numbers, I finally tend to uh, just read for what space they have. So every once in a while I take one of the guppies out and I'll put it in the 80 gallon just for the center home and have a little bit of uh, entertainment. Just so its life's not so boring. Alright, so this is my fish food shelf. So in here we have salmon roe which is a special treat. We have some octopus, which is a no-go with them. They didn't like the octopus. I got a couple packs of cyalopods. Got a krill. They don't like the krill. I have to actually trick them into the krill. We have some rotifers, which you know, is weird. Right here. this food. Or this. So the only food that they actually like enjoy eating is on this side. So blood worms and brine shrimp. Of course. And I usually just feed these to the uh, tank over there. Now this is cod. Uh, I bought this. Usually I prefer to get it myself. Catch it myself, but I just bought this. I find the fish like it better when it's like fresh stuff that you know cut up and freeze freeze to get a parasite first of course. So we have cod we got crickets, which I've been trying to feed more of, but Cinnapoma's not biting. 
And I wanted to try a uh, new fish to feed them. So, I got a salmon. And the idea is, why well, start running low well on this stuff? Because I'm just going to be feeding this stuff to that tank. When I start to run low on it, I'm going to feed the salmon to these fish. And I'm hoping they enjoy it. I honestly uh, they the cut up small enough for the meat, of course. But if they don't want to eat it, there's not much I can do about it. I usually do try and introduce it with some like brine shrimp or something that smells really good to them. Just that way that Cinepoma and all that no, it's like, hey, this is food. This isn't something that's just randomly putting in the tank, this is food. Not so much for that way. Uh but yeah. That's uh that's about it for this video. And I gotta go to work. So Damn. Okay. So yeah, that's it for this video. Um, the next one. Peace.